My today's talk will be indeed on analytical modeling of downbursts. I come from McGill University and the work here that I present is from my master student uh, Masud Moini. So I first want to acknowledge uh, support for our research from Vares Science Innovation Fund as well as NSERC. Before I go any further I would like to clarify a few abbreviations that I will use here. So if you forget these, then you might as well leave this room because you will not know what I'm talking about. So DB winds stands for downburst winds in the absence of any atmospheric boundary layer flow. ABL winds stands for atmospheric boundary layer winds. And DBABL stands for their combination when downburst interacts with ABL winds. So I'm not going to talk too much about downbursts and ABL winds because I assumed my previous speakers will cover that and they did excellent job. But I will just highlight some differences here. So if we have a convective cloud, let's say this one on, the, on your right, and uh, there is a downdraft of negatively buoyant air hitting the surface in the absence of cloud motion and ABL winds, we will have radial outflow and this is what we call DB outflow. UJ is the maximum velocity in the center line of this downdraft and if we look into any vertical plane the, the outflow should be symmetric. Now if we look uh, in the situation when we have the same thing but we sup supplement ABL winds then it's logical to expect that one way or another this outflow will be affected and there will be bias in the outflow. And, uh, we can maybe expect that the outflow will be biased towards the direction of ABL winds and here UH is the uh, ABL velocity at the cloud base height. So my student uh, looked into these uh, flows and the model that he worked on and developed, now this is important to remember, works only for this part of the outflow where the DB winds and ABL winds are in the same direction and in the few slides I'll explain why the model only works for this part of the outflow. So there is a lot of research that suggests and we saw also today that impinging jets are good substitute for downbursts in experimental setting and in this busy figure what you see here is collection of many, it's very busy figure but it's a collection of many impinging jet measurements in the presence of ABL winds or cross flow rather and without. And if we can see that both impinging jets issuing into calm environment and cross flow can be collapsed to same line if we use this normalization and this normalization in the X and Y axis where UABL is ABL wind velocity and UM is uh, velocity at the height of, well, maximum velocity in the outflow. However, there are two uh, tricks in this plot. First trick is that cross flow or ABL winds need to be substantially weaker than the downdraft. And the second trick is uh, that this graph can only be obtained for this part of the outflow we weren't able to find any normalization function that would collapse profiles for any other part of the outflow. However, this is also the most interesting part of the outflow because this is where the maximum velocity happens at least most of the time. So now when we, in the previous slide, when we found normalization functions that uh, collapse profile and here you can see empirical function, the very first in the legend is empirical function that fits all these profiles, we can suggest, subject this empirical function to perturbation analysis. Perturbation analysis in our, our case says that downburst, oops, that uh, downburst uh, is perturbed by ABL winds to produce DBABL outflow. Now in a uh, formal way perturbations need to be small just like in Reynolds decomposition and we also want to use Taylor series expansion so we impose that uh, a, uh, ABL winds have to be weak. Formally we have these three 
quantities that we subject that's velocity over bar is the base case, uh, base state, sorry, and that's downburst. Prime is perturbation, and then the right hand side is uh, resulting outflow. And uh, here, delta is the height where velocity drops for 50% compared to the maximum velocity in the outflow. And uh, in the previous slide, you saw this function. So this function is uh, the perturbation quantities are plugged in this function. We use Taylor series expansion, and we get this result where C and B are some constants. And the uh, base state is given by the work of uh, Porek et al, 1967. So this is not contribution of our work. This is just one of many analytical models of isolated downbursts. But what we do not know here uh, are uh, uh, these prime variables, which are perturbation by ABL winds. So to do that, uh, we use limiting case where lambda j defined as the ratio of the uh, velocity in the downdraft to the velocity in ABL winds close to the uh, cloud base needs to tend to infinity. And uh, now uh, here I skip some parts where I say if you take this limit, you take equation from previous slide, you do limit analysis, it can be shown that the maximum perturbation at any height is the ABL wind velocity at that height. So that makes kind of sense. Uh, and we also were able to determine the height of the maximum velocity with this equation. Uh, so with these two uh, results, the equation from the previous slide reduces to this simpler equation, but we still don't know this delta prime. And delta prime is perturbation of the half height by ABL winds. So to do that, to find that, we use the uh, jets issuing into coflow and the spreading rate of these jets that you can see here. So the jet is issuing from left to right, and there is this spreading. And there is this bj, which is uh, delta minus zm. And uh, from literature, uh, from literature, we know what is the spreading rate in uh, impinging jet from these papers and many other papers. So we can use this relationship to supplement our model. But unfortunately, s, c0, and gamma0 are unknown. And now to find uh, these, we again use Taylor series expression of uh, this uh, function over here, and we end up with differential equation, uh, which uh, is very nasty. But, uh, and actually, this differential equation cannot be solved using uh, uh, simple functions, except if we introduce the uh, assumption that everything on the left-hand side is constant in respect to r except delta, under these assumptions, this differential equation has a solution that you can see here, where this over here is hypergeometric function. Uh, you can read more about that here. And we get another integration constant. However, using again our limiting case that delta needs to collapse to delta over bar, namely perturbations need to disappear once we uh, terminate ABL winds, we were able to determine that S and C1 constants are these. And further, using a Taylor series expansion, we can simplify equation from the previous slide to this form over here. Now we know delta prime. However, uh, I mean, we have closed form solution for delta prime, but we don't know these two functions. And this is where I will also skip. This can be determined gamma naught minus uh, z naught can be determined using a continuity equation in the integral form. And I decided to skip this because, believe it or not, I have it covered on my YouTube channel. <laughs> so you can go there and uh, check how to, uh, how to obtain these things. But in simple words, what we assumed is the following, that the flow that enters here must leave here. That in other words, there is no uh, entrainment or leave of the flow through this uh, surface over here. And under these conditions, we were able to find these uh, functions. And the model, when we put everything together, I skipped 
I mean, our paper has 150 equations, so I had to skip something. Now, putting everything together, and that is equation for perturbation, and knowing delta prime uh, from the previous slide, we use ABL win profile in the, uh, as a power profile, 1 over 7. And we use DB base state from Porek et al. 1967. Putting all these together results in a model that looks like this, where now all these actually uh, constants on the right side are known. I didn't talk about CW, but CW has to do with the shape of the impinging jet uh, that is issuing from the noz nozzle. And what is interesting, that this term, long term, never disappears. It disappears only in the limit case where ABL winds tend to zero, then this goes to zero, this goes to zero, and of course, our outflow is the base state, which is just pure symmetric downburst. And now, last few slides. Here is the model verification. Well, just examples. So here is just without any normalization, wind speed, height. Here is our model without ABL winds. So that would be just basic analytical model. And here is with two ABL winds. Uh, these values that we used as the input parameters follow from the work of Hemfeld, 1987, where this is basically the mean of real downburst that he measured in the JAWS and Nimrod project. Here we see the comparison of our model against, uh, again, Hemfeld and Fujita and another analytical model of Seguera and Bowles. And we see that close to the surface, our model seems to provide higher wind speeds compared to the other analytical model from 1988. Here is, I will just go, how many minutes? Am I over time? Still have one minute. Okay. So here is a kind of comparison against wind tunnel measurements from Romanich and Hanga in 2020. And uh, because we saw in the previous presentation that Windy has opening from which impinging jet is issued. But that nozzle is not perfect. It has louvers. And these louvers, we believe, alter the value of this theoretical coefficient from 1, which is typical if the nozzle is without any obstruction, to something to 0 0.6. And we can see that for 0 0.6, our model gives better uh, agreement, but not so good agreement close to the surface. And uh, here, I think this is the last comparison, this comparison of our model without ABL winds, so lambda j is infinity, and the most famous model, I would say, of Seguera and Bowles from 1988, we see that the models are similar, but there are some differences. Uh, and uh, one of the differences is uh, in our model, you saw that we have the spreading rate of the jet, and the height of the maximum velocity changes with the distance from the downdraft. In their model, that was constant. That is just one of the differences. So, final conclusion is that uh, this work resulted in a closed form solution of perturbation theory, how to combine DB and ABL winds. And uh, it's really great to be back in Italy, and uh, I'm very happy to be here. So, uh, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. <laughs>